We are thankful to be here today. We are blessed to know the spirit of resurrection and new life in Jesus, in creation, and in each other. In the spirit of knowing and respecting each other, we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Mi'kmaq people. May we live with respect on this land that was first theirs and live together in peace. you've had a good week. It's been very hot this week so it's been a little bit tiring to do things because the heat just seems to sap your energy doesn't it a little bit so it's always good if you can get in the water and cool off or come outside as I am now in the shade when the heat's settled down a little bit and it's there's a nice breeze blowing it's lovely. Now we've been doing some things around our house since we're all at home and some of it has made us a little tired just like the heat so I thought we that was something we could think about today have you ever been working on say a homework assignment and you work really really hard on it and you're so excited to have it all finished because now you can go on to something fun and then you turn it over to the last page and find you still have one more question or maybe you've been cleaning your room, doing a really thorough sorting, and you think, oh great, everything's done. And then you go to put something away and you discover there's one drawer that you've missed and you were so close and now you have to go back. And even though you're tired, you have to finish the homework, you have to finish the room. And sometimes that's hard. Now you may not know that feeling yet, but I promise your grown-ups know that feeling of tiredness and having to carry on anyway. And it's something that comes up in our Bible story this week. This week's story is Matthew 14, chapters 13 to 21. And this is one of the stories we know really well. We talk about this one a lot because it's, one where Je it's the one where Jesus feeds the 5,000. He's teaching, he's healing, and 5,000 people need to be fed. And the disciples want to send them away to find their own food because everybody's tired. They've all had a long day. And Jesus says, no, 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 let them sit here. What do we have? And this is where he has the five loaves and two fishes and they feed 5,000 people and pick up 12 baskets of leftovers at the end. And this is a story we read as one of the miracle stories, right? Because this is such a wondrous thing that we could never imagine, but Jesus shows us this and this miracle shows us the power of God. But the beginning of the story is what I want to talk about this week. Because at the beginning of the story, it tells us that Jesus is trying to get away by himself for a bit. He's just had some bad news. He's found out that his cousin has, has died. John the Baptist is dead. And he's very sad and he needs to think. And this, this, this news really affects him. And he's been working really hard when he gets it and he's just he needs some time. But then all of these people come to him needing to be healed. 
needing to be cared for. And so Jesus does that first. And then he goes away with the disciples by himself. And then he has his change. My Nana used to say that a change is as good as a rest, which means sometimes when we're tired, we don't necessarily need to do nothing. We just need to do something different. We need to use our brains and our bodies in a different way. So that's something that I think some of us have struggled with a little bit these last few months because we've been at home so much. All of the things that we would normally do, you know, whether you've gone, you know, been able to go to the library or go out on the trail or go and visit your friends, um, all of those things, go to dance class, whatever it is. Some of those things we couldn't do for a while. And that was hard for people. Well, certain things are starting to open up a little bit. We're still not back at our usual activities completely. So we've had to come up with some things that we can do here. And so some of the things I do when I'm tired, I will come out and pick some raspberries, for example, because it gets me outside and away from the computer if I'm doing work for that or out of the kitchen or whatever it is I'm doing. It's a change. Or I will sit down and do a craft for a little while. I will make something. Um, I'm working on a couple of Christmas presents right now, so that's always fun. And Thomas and Maggie have found things too. And what it does is it, it just lets you use your brain a little differently so that one part of your brain can rest and the other part can do something different. And I go for walks because it's always nice to be out in nature and clear my head and do all those sorts of, sorts of things. It helps me settle my thoughts. And so this is why it's important for, for you to have different things that you can do and recognize sometimes that when you're tired, you need to change what you're doing a little bit. And it's something that's important for the grown-ups to recognize too, because sometimes the grown-ups forget. Remember that at the very beginning of the Bible in the creation story that on the seventh day, God rested. And throughout the gospels, we see Jesus taking time to rest and relax with friends. He has meals with friends or he takes some time out to go and pray and reflect and those, all, all of those sorts of things. He recognizes that it's important to have those breaks and it's something we need to remember too because without those breaks, we cannot take care of ourselves well and we cannot love and serve others as God wants us to. So find some things that you enjoy doing that change up how you use your brain and your body. See what you can come up with find new ways to serve God, find new ways to help your family, and have a great week everybody. Stay safe, wash your hands lots, and God bless. Bye guys. Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello! It's Kevin. I'm back again in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you're watching this, at whatever time you're watching this. We're here. And we're here because it's still not safe to go back inside our building. Our building is under construction. You've seen some of the pictures that uh, we've sent you. You've seen some of the artwork that Locke has shared with you around our sanctuary. You know the sanctuary isn't ready. And frankly, many people in the church aren't ready um, either to go back in. And so while we wait, um, for our working group, in case you're wondering, there's a small working group putting together a plan 
uh, possibly in the fall, but don't quote me on that, we don't know, we don't know, but maybe for the fall we're looking at a plan. And until then, you're stuck with me. So, sit back with your coffee, with your tea, with your whole glass of water, with your kale, right Anne? And just relax. And it's appropriate that I talk about relax, because our text, if you were listening to Anne Reed, and of course you were listening to Anne Reed, um, you would have heard Jesus um, referencing a story. And it's a great story. At the beginning of the story, uh, Jesus hears some extremely hard news. It doesn't get much worse than this. His cousin, John the Baptist, has been executed by the state. John the Baptist, outspoken, um, said things in reference to the empire that got him in some big trouble. And because John the Baptist was so outspoken, um, he was eventually jailed and then put to death. Jesus hears this news. He has been out and about healing, preaching, doing what Jesus does. And he now hears the news that his cousin has been put to death. Jesus' response was to get away, was to go and be alone with himself, with God, and, and to renew and restore his spirit. In the midst of that, of, of his getting away, he becomes aware that from the towns and the villages, the crowds have begun to gather. They are hungry. My hunch is that they are hungry for food and they are hungry for his wisdom. No doubt they know about John the Baptist as well. And they're wondering what to make of this assault on the kingdom of God. What is happening to this movement that we believe in? What should we do? So they're hungry and they're also hungry for good news. They're hungry for wisdom. They're hungry for Jesus. So what does Jesus do? Well, the disciples are of a mood to have a retreat. They want to take Jesus with them and go off somewhere and be together. Jesus, I think, wanted to be alone. But in that moment, he decides he is going to feed these people. He's going to feed them with food. He's going to feed them with the word. He's going to feed them with healing and love. He's going to feed them. So he postpones his, his uh, need to renew in order to care for these others. When I heard this story for the first time when I began to think about preaching, the first thought I had was I remember going away uh, to Maritime Conference the year before I was ordained. And I remember sitting at a table with PKs. Now, do you know what a PK is? A preacher's kid, or if you're a Baptist, the pastor's kid. So, these PKs sitting around me, all my age, all going into ministry, tell me the story of growing up in the 60s and the 70s with their fathers, they were all men, the, 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 the parent, who were ministers. And they, all of them had the same story. It's summertime. We're finally going to spend some time with Dad. It's going to be great. Back then, everybody had three kids. So the three kids were in the back seat of the station wagon. Did I say station wagon? I said station wagon. And the car is jammed with stuff. Jammed with stuff, right? And the car, and they're getting ready to go. And they're going to go. They're going to go. And no seat belts, by the way. And they're ready to go. And the phone rings. And their mother says, don't answer that. Don't answer that. And the father says, I got a table. He goes in the house and he answers the phone. He comes out and he says, I'm sorry, your mother's gonna take you for ice cream. I need to go to the hospital. And these colleagues said to me, we never really had any quality time with our fathers at all. And so it's not gonna be like that for me. I'm not gonna have a heart attack when I'm 50. I'm not gonna live to think about my children as these people who lived in my house, but I don't really know them. It's going to be different. When I'm ordained, Kevin, 
I am not going to give out my home phone number. I am going to work 35 hours a week. I am not going to tell people where I live. I am going to have very strict boundaries and I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to practice self-care, right? And I said, right. Fast forward over the years, I have served on many search committees. That is, I have been the uh, presbytery rep on search committees as people are looking at ministers. And most of the committee have been older folk, right? And they remember the minister who gave up his vacation to look after somebody in the hospital. They remember. And all of a sudden, they're looking at these candidates who are thinking about coming to their church. And they're saying, I will work 35 to 40 hours a week. I will go away on vacation and not return. I will not give out my home phone number. And these folk are saying, what planet is this person from? The, do they not make ministers like they used to? And they look at me as if, you defend these people. They're your age. And I said to them, my friends, do you not understand what cost there has been to families as a result of this way of ministry? Now, my wife and daughter would say, he talks a good game. But self-care is not in Kevin's uh, dictionary. Right? There are a lot of words not in my dictionary. But anyway, um, what I will tell you is this. For myself, as a minister, I practice self-care. You may not believe me, because I don't practice self-care the way you do. Self-care for me is not laying on a beach with all kinds of oil all over my body. Let's leave that alone. Um, Self-care for me is not going to play golf. Oh my Lord, that's hell. Uh, Self-care for me, right, is not spending a lot of money at a store. Oh my gosh. Self-care for me is going for a long walk. Self-care for me is spending time with a friend who makes me laugh. Self-care for me is being with my wife and my daughter on the deck. That's self-care. And I do. I practice lots of it. What I do, which I, I, I try to model as what Jesus did, when the moment occurs, even if you're tired, even if you're weary, I tend to say to myself, I can do this. Yes, I can. But I'm going to set some time later for myself. And I do. If I get called out on in my day off, I will do that work. And I gladly do it. And I do it because I love to do it. But I'm like anybody. I get tired. I get weary. I need to relax. But after a while, after a while, I will spend some time. Now you might say, where does a spiritual renewal come? Ah, I'm glad you asked. It's all in the walking. There are days when I'm out walking and I'm beat tired. I'm absolutely tired. And I take my hands and I put them out. And people who watch me walking like this think, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Anyway, I put my hands out and I say, God, fill me. Fill me. And I will tell you that I have been very blessed in my life. I'm not a martyr. I don't think I'm the only one who can do it. Many times at Bethany, people have been in difficult places. I don't think I'm the one. I will frequently call someone, one of you, to say, you call them. Because I'm not the one who can help everybody. I'm not. But together, we can do it. Together, we can recharge our batteries. We can laugh together. We can have fun together. We can be together. We can serve each other. We can do those fall fair things and be tired as all get out. And you know what? We can laugh too. My friends, Jesus was a model of service and he also was a model of prayer. May all of us find something deep inside us to renew us and keep us strong. In Jesus' name, amen.
we pray. And given the theme of our service today and the text that we have heard and the hymns that you have also witnessed, um, it seems appropriate that we would pray for renewed energy, for renewed spirit, for renewal of purpose. Um, let us pray. So God, we give thanks for the gift of mission and purpose and meaning Every morning when we wake up, we ask, why are we here? What are we for? What are we committed to? What can I do? And there is a still small voice that tells us, you are more than enough. You are someone who has a gift. And together with others, we can, we can make a difference. For that voice, God, we give thanks. For the reassurance when our gift seems insufficient. When we question whether our gift is worthy. God, we give thanks for your reassurance and your energy and your focus. Help us not to be distracted by the voices of our world. Voices that tell us to look in the mirror. Am I a success? Do I look good enough? Do I have enough? No, God, you give us the insight to know what to look for, which is that sense of purpose and connection and meaning. Remind us who we are and whose we are and bring our sense of weariness to new life. As Ezekiel talked about dry bones, knit together the sinew of our bones to bring new life so that we dance and sing and laugh together as new people. We say all of this and ask all of this in your good name as we say the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
glorious day, whatever you have planned, whatever you have planned, know that our worship has ended, but our service has begun. Amen.